Welcome back to another episode of The Huge Boob Corner, a show that is a breast of fresh air. And I just wanted to say, if you could please, you know, if you like the show, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps to, to spread awareness and exposure, so I'd, I'd really appreciate it. So today, my guest is super, a super beautiful, super busty lady. She was, I was lucky enough that I was able to be squeezed in between. So Miss Sabian, Sabian, Sabian. Demonia. Yes, uh, Sabian. yes, good, good. Yes. You did well, you did well. I, I tried, I tried. Yes. So th the thank you for being on the show. My pleasure. <laughs> so, how, so yeah, so you just came from a shoot and then you have another one coming up. I just up. came, yeah. full stop. Yes, you did. <laughs> Yes, and then I will come again. <laughs> yes. Sounds like a nice day yes, coming up for you. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I have to squeeze my cheeks a little, but apart from that, <laughs> it's a very nice day. Uh, you, you can see the smile. The beginning of the day was a very good beginning. Yeah, you have I, a glow. You have a nice yeah, glow, it's called, after scene glow. It's called post nut. Yes. yes. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> yes. So, so, yeah, the smile is bigger than ever. Yeah. Tits are as big as usual. Yes. <laughs> Looking wonderful. Thank and, you. And, and very, you know, and again, so... Uh, so yeah, actually, uh, your your name. So what you said? There's a story behind your name. There is a story behind my name. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I'm always asked because everybody are as confused how to pronounce it and mm -hmm. whatever, and where it comes from. Uh, so it was a high school joke. Okay. Uh, I was in art school. Mm -hmm. I was attending art school, and for whatever reason, my head uh, mister decided that if I'm doing art, I have to know how to speak French. Okay. So the French was obligatory, mm -hmm. uh, and it was like, you know, possibly more important than actual art at some point, what was sad because I'm really bad with French other than, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, there are type, types of French I'm good at, yeah. it's just not speaking. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so technically, uh, my um, teacher didn't like me much from the beginning. She just saw me and she was like, we will be not friends. She was like this this typical, mm -hmm. typical French bitchy teacher, you know? Okay. And the first uh, class was about the names. And technically, she was teaching us how to pronounce our names in French because apparently, you know, there is different pronunciations for the same name. Like you have, you know, Miguel, Michael, Michal. Yeah. That sure, concept, sure. right? Uh, so she said that my name is Sabien because my real name is Sabina. Okay. Uh, but then she was like, actually, you know, uh, let me correct it. It's a male version of your name. But entire class was like, Sabian fits, fits her so well. Okay. So I started putting Sabian in front of my fucking, you know, desk. Yeah. Every time I did it, she cross it and put it to the trash and I was like no I feel like Sabine it's resemble me yeah. and it's very like it, it's because Sabine eh, Sabine yes okay yeah the difference yeah, yeah, yeah. is huge uh, so then uh, and Demonia it was because I was always the odd one out I was the golf girl the dark one mm -hmm. and they've been trying to just take a piss out of me so I was like ha, you will <laughs> let's see who will laugh last one <laughs> <laughs> so I own it before I even start doing adult and technically now it's not just I own it. I also make them moan my name yeah. as a revenge. Yeah, so that is a, that is a nice yeah that, <laughs> that is a nice sweet circle. revenge of mine. Now now they all be like, oh my god, Sabien Demonia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, bitch. Yeah. Who's laughing now? Yeah. Have you, I was curious, like, have you have you encountered people from art school since you started doing adult work? I mean, I, obviously I had some people sliding into my DMs being yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so remember me? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I do remember how you tried to bully me. Mm -hmm. and, and you failed, by the way, because not easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah. Uh, and, and who's crack wanking now, huh? <laughs> yeah, that is that is that's probably a pretty good feeling to know. Oh, I knew from. I mean, uh, there was, and it's kind of funny because I always knew that mm -hmm. I went for theater school too. After yeah. my art, I went specifically for theater, so I was always aiming into that realm. I would say. Then I kind of went into fetish world, so I decided to be more like a model, less like an actress. Mm -hmm. And but I still knew that will be something I'm into, right? Like yeah. like performing and being out there and whatever else. Something creative. Yes, creative for sure. And it also requiring my tits, my face and my ass to be in the center of the attention because, yeah. well, listen, I like to share with people the best things. Yeah. <laughs> so, and put them into work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, I would love to be a vocalist, but I don't have a voice, but I still have tits. So, I'm like, ah, that, sweet spot in between. I, I will not make you listen to me not being able to speak, like have nice sounds out of Mm -hmm. me 
but you still can have the visuals. There's something to look at, yeah. You can still enjoy the visuals. Well, a body's a work of art, too. Literally. That's why tattoos as well. Yes, exactly. Uh, so technically, my concept was always something like that. And there was a moment when I was finishing my school. And I remember the cleaners in my school, they always liked me. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, oh, we know. We just simply know. There will be the day when you come back to this school and we will be getting uh, magazines with your autographs on it. And little that I know, I'm now in Playboy. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I saw that. They manifested for me <laughs> exactly yeah so uh how long after you or like what when you were in art school were you did you have a specific thing that you were studying or a specific type of like you know style or or was it just you know it was just you just liked art and that's why you went i mean i was always artistic uh, and always drawn towards that. Like mm -hmm. I liked paint. I had a few exhibitions. I had exp exhibition of my art okay. in Berlin. I have experience. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I was pretty successful in painting concept and like, you know, creating visual arts that are more like me making it and then showcasing it rather mm -hmm. than anything. I, I've been writing poetry for a short period of time. I won some award for it. Like mm -hmm. I was always drawn towards art and music and culture in general and then I start theater yeah and I been in theater school for like two three years and that was something I really really enjoyed yeah uh it was I I'm very good in improv so yes and yeah, is and my thing difficult. yeah I love improv and I also have been doing actually acting without speaking at all acting with the with the music as a background and like mm -hmm. yeah so that that was something I really enjoyed and it was really fun um um, and then I kind of get a little swamped in my family um, living. So I kind of stepped back a little bit. Didn't go to study because I wanted to go to University of Art in U uh, in Poland. But I, fortunately, I couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to UK. Okay. And I figured out that in UK, whatever I was feeling like it's hobby and hopefully one day maybe, mm -hmm. in UK become my full-time job. Okay. Really quickly. So I become like a stylist on the set for the photos. Mm -hmm. I was doing makeup. I learned how to do makeup and, and how to style. Because I really want to do a fashion. Okay. That was like the original concept was fashion. I wanted to dress people for theater and for, for movies. Okay. Oh, so you wanted to be a co like costume designer? Yeah, costume or, designer. Or, 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 that, or, or, was okay. my, um, that was my dream to, to, to be. Okay. To, to be costume designer. Uh, but obviously that required a lot of knowledge and technique and everything. So I switched a little bit into the, like a FX makeup concept. I started okay. doing FX makeup. Nice. <laughs> I did a lot of FX makeup for my actual porn stuff too oh you, oh you do yeah yeah. that's that's how I started winning awards in the industry I start to putting prosthetics on myself for Halloween oh. shoots oh <laughs> I, that's interesting I, yeah I won my fir very first award for a uh, best gothic scene of the year mm -hmm. with alt um, alt porn awards uh, and I was fully dressed in like prosthetics on my chest with like breathing pentagram and mm -hmm. and I did and everything and I also did a little bit of like spooky cosplays like I was uh, doing um, XX Exorcist yeah <laughs> <laughs> that type of thing because yeah. I really I like being filthy but I like to be creative even more so if yeah, I can yeah, mix yeah. both of those things and, and, and make it a little spooky and weird then perfect it's like you know you feel aroused but you mm -hmm. question if you should wank to it or not <laughs> well and it, that's it, my realm <laughs> yeah well and it's cool because you can actually do that now you can actually create your own style you can create your own uh, aesthetic in, in in terms of the kind of content that you make and so you can hit that specific like if you want to be more gothic you want to you want to like i was thinking of uh there was a i think I think he was Danish or somewhere, but the the artist uh, H.R. Giger. H.R. Giger who, is yeah. from uh, the Swiss, not, uh, he's not Danish. He lives uh, in Gruyere, yeah, I, uh, I, Switzerland. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, he, he died I've a few in, years ago. I, I've but been in his museum. I'm a big fan of uh, H.R. Giger because he's an uh, alien creator. Yeah, he created alien. Yeah. He created it. Uh, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> yeah, and his, his, his creations just were very, they were very dark, dark but sexy. they were very sexual. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why they that's said. That's why I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what the whole the whole concept of the alien and the idea of mm -hmm. the chestburster basically being yes. this kind of, you know, phallic, you know, pe you know, Originally, penis coming out uh, of her, he also know. creates species. There was a movie called yeah, Species, yeah, with, yeah, and it was uh, so hot. Yeah, with Natasha, oh, Natasha Henstridge. Yes, I love Species. It's underrated as fuck. But um, there is a he actually have his museum in Gruyere. I went there mm -hmm. in between my shoots. I like literally had one constellation when I was uh, visiting Zurich, and I'm like, oh, it's suddenly hundred miles away. Let's go. Yeah. So I went to the museum, and it's like you walk like into the 
spaceship mm -hmm. and part of the museum is actually 18 plus only. Oh, yeah, I'm not surprised. And it's great. Yeah. It's great. Definitely worth it. There is like the, the figurines from Species on the entrance and mm -hmm. whatever else. Plus, I drink the biggest jar of beer ever because <laughs> they have a like, um, it's supposed to be like, you know, coffee place, but technically they serve mostly beer. Yeah. <laughs> and the beer was like that fucking big. Like, <laughs> and you si sit in the seats like from Prometheus. Okay. Yeah. That are huge seats like on Prometheus. And then you have this big jar of beer. I was like, oh my God. Wow. I live my life to the fullest. I was so happy. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's the thing is, and because when you talked, when you were mentioning that again, it seemed like he was one of those first artists that really kind of uh, was able to fuse this kind of super dark gothic, you know, kind of scary. I mean, with, there was Bekczynski as well. Bekczynski is Polish, and yeah. he was very, he was very into it. And okay. before he, you know, and the life himself, uh, was already speaks very you know about you know how dark his brain was yeah uh and then i'm also a very big fan of uh salvador dali and goya oh, yeah. Yeah, goya yeah, yeah. goya was the first gothic one he was we did we didn't call each other goths when goya was an artist yeah, like, that, yeah that was a different thing <laughs> yeah but uh, but he, his art is extremely dark and creepy and mm -hmm. sexy and hot yeah <laughs> well and so and yeah and so that's the thing so is that why like you just you know artistic things just draw you so much is because they they have such an effect on you in I, terms of I, my aunt is an artist she okay. lives in Berlin she says she actually helped me to sort, uh, sort my very first paint gigs as a painter myself mm -hmm. when I was a teenager that was my first like site job for the summertime I learned how to speak fluent German that time and I was um, helping her in like preparing exhibitions and stuff and I, I think I just catch the mm -hmm. bug of art I, I I never find myself again the same I would say when I I never feel like connected with Poland because of that because mm -hmm. Poland seems to be very like daunting and not that artistic not that mind op open-minded like I like it Berlin yeah. is extremely open-minded place and yep. I kind of grew up there and yeah I, mean, I will say there's there's a, there's a few decent uh, or there's a uh, you know because I'm really into film that's that's probably my thing so I know that there's a uh, uh, some really good Polish film directors mm -hmm. out there. I think uh, some of it? them are very, uh, you know, we don't tell their names because they've been naughty in the US. I know. Yeah. Like Polanski. We don't talk <laughs> yeah, about Yeah, Polanski. yeah, no, no. But I was thinking more, <laughs> I think his name is, uh, I think it's, uh, was it Krzysztof Kieslowski? Kies Kieslowski. Yeah. yeah Kieslowski yeah. is, that's how he was fun. Yeah. Yeah, Kieslowski. yeah. So he's, he's very, you know, he's, I've seen a lot of his films and they're, you know, they're really, a lot of them are really great. I mean, um, the cinematography in Poland was very strong. I actually had the pleasure to work uh, with a photographer who worked on the Star Wars set. Okay. Uh, and and he worked closely with Polish um, Polish people who are usually responsible for design of the clothes. Mm -hmm. There is a, just one company in the entire world that creates and designs uh, when you have like scenes of beheading. Okay. There is only one company who does that, and it's Polish. Really? Yes. Interesting. <laughs> so every single time you see uh, someone's head falling in Game of Thrones, for example. It's them. It's them. It's them there, doing there, the So job. there is a decapitation company. that yes, they, they, they specialize just in that. That, yes, that's correct. Yeah, yes. Ima imagine you know, that the starting conversation. So what should our focus be? Head beheadings. <laughs> we'll, we will excel. If you lose your head, don't worry. We got you. Yeah, we got you. <laughs> So, uh, so then how, so when, um, how did you transition then from going from say more mainstream work to, to adult work? I mean, in between shooting like videos with um, music videos, because I was trying to go into music videos concept more. Mm -hmm. Like I, I shot with uh, Harry Styles, for example. Oh, okay. <laughs> From people like, I don't listen to his songs and whatever, but it, he was Yeah, he really doesn't seem like your type, but... <laughs> not my type, no. Uh, musically? But he's, uh, very, in general. Okay, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not into, <laughs> into that kind of concept. Like, I, I, don't, I find him very interesting as, a, as an artist. Yes. In his realm, I would say. And I do find him as a pretty nice guy, like on behind the scenes. He shook yeah. my hand, talked to oh, okay, yeah, every single right. person. Like he wasn't like full of himself or okay. whatever. Um, but aside of that, that's that would be it. That would be it. <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> I have to say, I, that's it. It's more your uh, like a Marilyn I'm, Manson. I'm different direction than his one direction, I would yeah, say. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's all I can say about him, really. Yeah. Uh, and it's only because people have been asking about what what I think, and I had to make a little research about what 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 I have been doing there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, 
in general, I was doing v music videos. Mm -hmm. uh, I was trying to go into metal space because I'm a metal head myself. Yeah, we'll, get, like we'll get to the yeah, music I stuff know, a little I later. Know. Um, but yeah. But I will start to be, I mean, personally, I'm a fetishist. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm into fetish. Yeah. Uh, so I catch contacts with people in London when I moved to UK, when I start to be like adult. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't want to do just those nine to five jobs, even though I had to, but I was imminently craving some contacts with something else. Yeah. So I was looking for jobs as a stylist, like I said. I did style a few, few shoots for a few magazines, like fa fashion magazines as well. Mm -hmm. So I wander around that. I was like hoping I might go to college of San Martin one day, but it was way out of my pocket at the time. But I found a few friends from there, so that was kind of cool. Uh, and I met people who design latex. Okay. And I started wearing latex, so I become a fetish model. I was already kind of big on Instagram because of my passion to modeling, so yeah. I started to do that. I started to go to fetish parties and such. And like, you know, step by step by step, like in fetish world, that there are a few adult uh, performers, whatever. And mm -hmm. eventually, at some point, a friend of mine asked me, oh, do you, you have big following. Would you like to join us in like a 24-7 um, um, house for cam girls, porn stars, and creators? And I'm like, okay, cool. And I met a uh, girl who was a uh, brother's girl mm -hmm. and she was like you would look so good sucking dick I'm like <laughs> <laughs> you wasting your potential bitch and we did a show together and she kind of um, convinced me and then at that time I was actually getting married and I find out that my husband's biggest dream is to be a porn star so I'm like ah oh well hey yeah Wait. I make his dream come true now he's the ex but <laughs> no, still. Still, like I let him be in the places where he could shake a hand of Rigoroco si Freddy. So I think we good. Yeah. Right? I think I kind of put myself out there and I had some type of support from his side. So I felt like, you know, supported enough to make this step. Mm -hmm. And I kind of succeeded thanks to it. So there's nothing but out of it, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I feel like he could be as close to the sun as possible thanks to it, you mm -hmm. know, because. Um, this part brought Rocco really close so he could shook his hand. I think we're good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know, we all follow our dreams. I, I like adult because it's freeing. Mm -hmm. A lot of freedom there. Uh, and since there's power to creator concept now with all the platforms, yeah. that was always my thing. I like to do my shit. <laughs> yeah, because I think back before then, I mean, there was only a few companies that shot fetish content i mean i i've been directing for king.com so yeah yeah so yeah king.com <laughs> yes. i think was probably the most uh, the yeah, most well known yeah they one. found me just say after yeah. i actually shoot this uh, this fx you know gory scene and whatever it won award with their scene okay and when i visit first time avns i think and i was no it wasn't avns it was the year before the avns happened but it, it, people anyway met in vegas mm -hmm. i'm i met the one of the C, uh, ceo uh, at the bar and I was like I won with you huh? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like show me with what and I'm like this and he's like oh and we don't work with each other how yeah. and boom I become a European female director of the king.com for, mm -hmm. for an entire year so that was cool so how, how long after you started performing did you start directing was it pretty, was it pretty quickly I, I feel like I slide really quick into everything and, okay okay I, I would say like that uh, I do fetish since I remember because I'm a fetishist myself, so I don't mm -hmm. even know when it become a work from being just fun. Yeah. Uh, but technically, I started filming my first clips and I went to this um, project in 2018. Okay. 2019, I, I had my first ride in Fake Taxi. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> then there was coronavirus, so we go back to my dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as I went out of my dungeon, really, uh, I'm 2000. 20 mm -hmm. i meet the guys from king and boom the same year i become a director nice so i i speed run shit <laughs> pretty well now I'm, I'm curious are there major differences between say a european porn set and an american one oh, so many really okay so, so what, what are some of the differences i mean technically let's be honest i've been shooting mostly content in here okay uh so i didn't go for like the big 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 boys yet mm -hmm. but i saw big boys since and set up because um, I've been I've been crashing at the location yeah, once yeah. or twice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I also saw shoot with alt erotic and stuff so they are also decent sized company mm -hmm. not browser size but still very pretty big yeah. and possibly the biggest for uh, tattooed models still so mm -hmm. 
Um, well, the difference is it's way more easygoing. It's less planned. There is more freedom on the here set. Or in here or here? Here, okay. Yes. In, in Europe, they are very strict. It's like this, that, that time, this position, that time, this position, this many positions in that. Blah, blah, blah. It's very organized. Okay. Even when I was doing gangbangs, they are still extremely organized. It's like, like very, a lot of choreography. Like it's a, literally like, like ballet. Very, okay. They literally dread like running around me, just, you, babe. Chill and open your holes. We will do rest. And they like tu, 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 and <laughs> and they just now this now that now you are recording now you're doing this and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? How do you like? And they're like, don't worry, we're doing it every day, three scenes a day. It's fine. Tu, 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 tu. And they're doing their shit. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like I will just relax and squirt on few of you, and, <laughs> and we good. <laughs> so so the um, Europe is very strict when it comes to like a uh, mainstream production. They're very like. Mm -hmm. We need that type of a model for that type of the scene. That's how long it has to be, this many positions and whatever else. Mm -hmm. Where in here, I see that, and also the uh, people are more natural because we have, you know, the tendency, some performers are more like, you know, enhanced so they are longer yeah. up and whatever. Uh, that's that happening in here. So it's all more about the vibe, the chemistry mm -hmm. and the interaction between uh, talent. Obviously, there is still a lot of um, acting options. Yeah. Like with Gamma, Gamma makes really good movies. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to sex scene, sex scene is way more the um, uh, performer less director yeah where in europe usually is the director who is very strict i was trying to actually do the opposite i was trying to take notes from us mm -hmm. and um, first and foremost pay attention a lot to the casting mm -hmm. make sure that the casting is good that the people are vibing with each other they like each other they will interact with each other in, in the way that it will feel natural not pressured uh, and I also try to work around the talent, but yeah. uh, that's the also difference. That also like Europe, US, it's also the difference between uh, performer director and just director. Just director, yeah. And that's the same I think in Hollywood too. If you when you act, actor directors like say someone like a Clint Eastwood, he he would bring his experiences as an actor and be mm -hmm. like. You know, I never really liked this when directors would do this because mm -hmm. you had directors like Alfred Hitchcock that basically looked at, at people as actors as just moving props. Yeah. So he didn't think of them as people. He didn't try to, like, you know, connect with them. He would just be and like, do it. we have sets like that yeah. in Europe. Yeah. That's how it feels sometimes. It's very, like, unhuman almost. Like, it feels like it, you almost forget that you're there for sex. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not good. <laughs> well, and that, well, and that And that's something that I think a lot of people might not realize that you know because people look at at porn as like they think it's this really hot sensual thing which you know maybe it can be sometimes but a lot of times sets can be very technical very clinical and it's like it's good to have balance yeah honestly because um going too hard on the other side also create a lot of like mess and and it's just not that good to watch like there is a huge step between content creators and porn stars but simply because uh, I, and from my point of view, of course, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's um, it's the difference between understanding of the outside, mm -hmm. not just focusing on the in between inside. Yeah, like like the step into mainstream teach you how to be more op more aware of your outside world. Yeah, because the problem, I mean, it's not a problem. It's just the challenge of doing sex on camera. Is sex is very animalistic. Very, and it's supposed to be this yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, very physical. It, very physical, but very focused on reading the body language of your of your partner. Partners sometimes. Yeah. The more partners, the more you know. Focus is on the, yeah. the on that. But the difference is how aware you are of people around you who try to capture it. Mm -hmm. And often doing content makes you very lazy when it comes to that because you are used to, to your one angle or you're simply just doing like sex tapes and stuff like that. And yeah. it, it, it's all, amateur is all about the vibe and feel. So technically you shouldn't even care that much yeah. to begin with. But then if you go into mainstream or are you trying to like match more the energy yeah. of the professionals, then you have to be way more aware of your po of your body positioning. And mm -hmm. it's not the positioning of your dick, it's positioning of your legs, your your hands, your yeah. feet, like the small things, the tiniest 
stuff mm-hmm. is the most important because, you know, okay, well, obviously we all know that there are main parts, tits, us, gape, that yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. But then technically, as a person who watches porn myself, I get distracted when I see clutter behind it. Okay. Get, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I can't stand it. I don't know. Maybe it's like a just fem- stuff in the background. Yes. Maybe it's a female thing, but I just can't. <laughs> I, I, if I get the dick pic with the tons of shit around it, pff, take it back. I don't want it. You can have the beautiful, the most sexy looking body. If I see your toothbrush and shit like that, just don't. Please yeah, don't. there's a lot of business. Yes. I don't really want to know what color are your socks. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> you can keep it for yourself. Uh, yeah. I also don't want to know how, how many towels did you use in this week? Uh, like, <laughs> please don't. Just don't. I am visual creature. I like nice visuals. Visuals for me are the thing that it's visuals and sounds is two things that turn me on the most if I watch something because obviously I can't smell it because if I would smell and he will smell delicious I might be actually more understanding of the towers in the okay. background okay because okay. if you smell good then I yeah, can then it, then I can turn my blind eye because I will close my eyes because I will just smell you right but if I have to watch you please be clean thank yeah. you so, uh, <laughs> so the same thing is with the body language it has to be clean body language meaning I don't like like some limbs that are just out of nowhere for no reason, like mm-hmm. left out completely, like you forgot that you have second hand. Like you don't know what <laughs> like, to do with it? Like it's just hanging right you're there. Just hang- and you're like, just holding it somewhere? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I saw sometimes just being so into like, oh, you know, quick, 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 you know. Mm-hmm. And then the hand is just like <laughs> there. And I'm like, why you will not like slap her? I don't know. Do gra- something. Grab something put your hand into work my dude it's not about just the dick work it's about the body work so and the same thing is like i have a thing when i watch um um girls getting fucked i like to see their feet being nicely positioned it's it's a modeling thing okay okay i don't like when the girl is like you know the flat hand or flat feet. It, it looks. It looks. You can see it looks big. Yeah. It looks unflattery. Everything need to be more like you know. Yeah. Yeah. More dramatic, but also more like point. I like pointy fingers. The mm-hmm. feet have to be pointy. Yeah. It's it's a it's a you know small thing, but in this the the devil is in the details. They say right. Yeah. Well, do you think that also stems from the fact that you are more creatively inclined, though, that you'll notice things more? Like I mean, that? I have more experience in being on pictures, so I had yeah. like a long, long time studying what mm-hmm. looks good on camera, right? Yeah. And I feel like a lot of directors actually like to work with me specifically because of that, mm-hmm. because that saves a lot of expl- explanation. Because I naturally you am understand. trained. Yeah, I, my brain is trained to remember about those tiny things. Mm-hmm. I still can focus on being fucked, but I will still make sure that my hair are not in the way, yeah. that my hand is not just like hanging, that my that everything is a overall good picture to watch. You know, yeah. so um, and I also do the same as a director. I to explain to the, the because I like to bring new talent. Mm-hmm. I like to give chances to new talents that yeah. if I see yeah. potential. So I'm like, just remember when you do this is how it looks like but it can look like that or you can just do something about it or you can put it in your hair you can mm-hmm. keep your f- hands busy if nobody else do it for you suck yeah. on your on your, on your figure suck on your teeth I don't know but just make it the way people can choose what they want to see mm-hmm. not don't force them to see whatever you are focused on focus yeah. on everything make an entire picture ple- pleasant to watch because yeah. you never know exactly the position of the camera and such mm-hmm. so you need to be also aware that was possibly the biggest change for me from being st- like static model to mm-hmm. actually be on video learning from the beginning how to uh, transfer nice visuals that are static Mm -hmm. into moving picture. Yeah. Because, you know, when you take pictures, you can change the position and look like absolute twat in between, you know? (laughs) And at the beginning, I saw that I look like a blob when I'm trying to move, like, and I make, like, I completely forget about it. Yeah. So that was the biggest challenge. It was to transfer nice visuals in between shots to still make it nice and flowy picture that is, you know, one big video. Mm-hmm. So, but it's good to, you know, study your body, basically. Yeah, yeah. 
watch you kn- yourself. <laughs> yeah, know, know what your good angles are, yes. what your good positions yes. are. And then make other people aware of it and then keep in mind that it's a, it's a teamwork. Yeah. yeah because yeah. that's also important. Like if you see, for example, someone from the team uh, being very busy with intense trusting, let's say, but you see that the hair are going in the way, take mm-hmm. the hair away from the face. Yeah. Assist your talent. Mm-hmm. Be as good as a backup dancer as the main character. Yeah. Because technically, on the end of the day, it's a group thing, and we all pulled our work. But making other people look good will make you f- look even better. Yeah. It'll, Rather it'll, than being all focused on yourself and waiting for your for, for your cue, mm-hmm. and and seeing the other, for example, girl. Uh, struggling with hair or whatever. No, I usually mm-hmm. try to be very attentive and and help. Isn't even when I keep camera yeah. and I see that girl, for example, have a problem because their legs are going numb from being up in the okay. air. Okay, yeah. I usually try to be like, you know, you can put it up here. We don't see it. It's fine. All right, nice. <laughs> we continue. Nice. <laughs> we're rolling. We're rolling. You you relax your hair legs so you can continue being more focused on what's what other fun is happening to mm-hmm. you. You know that type of stuff. So I'm curious with with all the stuff that you've done already for for content or, or scenes, are, are there still a lot of stuff that you wanted that you want to do? I'm creative. That's what I'm saying. Well, any my brain people, never stops. It doesn't. Yeah, it never stops. It's a it's a blessing and a curse. I will be honest. <laughs> and that's the thing with being creative. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you can't I, turn it off usually. I always see space for improvement in my work. I always see that I could do better next time. And I also always see potential in everything around me to create something filthy out of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a big fan of movies too. Horror yeah. movies to be specific. I know, not big sh- shock here. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> well, do you have any favorite directors that you take, say, maybe a lot of inspiration from? Uh, I like Costa Rica's movies, but they are very, very... Costa Rica? Okay. Yeah, I really like his movies. They're very, like weird and dark i love tim barton of course Term, yeah he's, he's of a classic course. i mean not a shocker here i know again i'm very predictable yeah. <laughs> when it comes to that i love tim barton movies oh i'm such a big fan of helena bottom carter oh, oh yeah 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 she's oh the, my god this woman is absolutely she, the best <laughs> she's got that kind of got she's always kind of been mm-hmm. that goth kind of queen as far as she have just naturally she have a natural mixture between genius and cr- crazy <laughs> and I love that. I, yeah. I love that. She enhanced crazy the way it's beautiful. Yeah. And, and it takes a lot to keep it in the realm when crazy is not simply just crazy. <laughs> yeah, no. To, yeah, you, yeah. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of the, of uh, their work because they're married, right? Yeah. Um, what else? I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Johnny Depp's movies in general. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm also, you know, big fan of Johnny Depp himself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but, you know, I'm going more into the, you know, the realm of in between like a creepy and, but more like an interview with a vampire concept, like okay. Ca- Ca- Coppola's Dracula, my favorite yeah, yeah, movie oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's of been, yeah. all time. I'm up, abs- oh, Dracula by Coppola is just absolutely beautiful. Well, Everything no, it's, about it. It's amazing. Like he, the, the, the production design, the, the costume the design. The visual. The yeah. music, oh my god! And it was actually music, music made by. Um, well, he was a po- he was Polish, a Polish composer. Compo- yeah. Yes. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm I'm not great with Polish names. It's fine. But. I will not <laughs> give you shit for that. It's but yeah, fine. no, no. But yeah, no. And great, yeah, great, great uh, score. So yes, uh, and he won an Oscar for his music too. So yeah, yeah. Well, and and that's yeah. The movie well, and what's great about the movie it's it's very highly stylized. It wasn't oh meant to god. be like this this because you know there are some that'll try to be more realistic and. And down to earth, but but Coppola, I mean, I do like Christopher Nolan, for example, yeah, with his yeah, yeah. dark stuff too. I love his Bane. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. Oh my God! Yes, Tom, Tom Hardy as Bane Ooh, <laughs> makes me chill. <laughs> yeah, but very different from like Tim Burton's Batman. Oh yeah, it's hundred percent different, and I like both actually. Yeah, for I, I do things. like it for different things, for different reasons, for different uh, concepts. But since it's a comic book. It should have depth to it, right? Mm-hmm. So we should be able to interpret it in different ways. We don't have to take it like I like how uh, Schwarzenegger didn't take it seriously, and Mr. Freeze yeah, yeah, is it, it very- possibly the most comic book um, persona ever. I'm a huge fan of Poison Ivy, of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer as a Catwoman, we can't even. We can't even. This is this is the only and the only right Catwoman that she, exists. She's she's the definitive version. Oh my god! Like, I mean, I'm sorry, the only one I can accept. I, I will be honest. It's yeah. like with the interview with the vampire. I know they remake it, and I'm so sorry about it. I 
I just why you, why redoing stuff that is perfect by design? Why not go into Chronicles of Vampire of Anne, well, Anne there's, Rice? Well, there's so many books. There's like there twelve so or thirteen books. books. There is so many books. They literally stack, and they also stack the, the, the mm, Queen of the Damned. It's mm. technically two books in one movie. Yeah, well, Vampire the, Lestat yes. and Queen of the Damned. So why? I'm asking yeah. why. That's my question. Like, there is so much material. You could do so many movies, and you could extend, like, expand. And there is so many variety in the characters. You don't mm -hmm. have to push it on one character to be two, three, four, five different actors. Yeah, I think uh, Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise did it perfectly fine. Yeah. You don't have to make less that in three different different people because. <laughs> well it was done perfectly fine. Well, you know, what's funny is, uh, so when Tom Cruise was cast as Lestat, Anne Rice actually was totally against that casting. She didn't think she was right at all. I think her initial idea for who she envisioned to be Lestat was uh, another, was a British actor named Julian Sands. Um, and because of his look and he had a very mm -hmm. kind of intense, very, mm -hmm. you know, but, but after she saw the movie, she actually wrote a letter to Tom Cruise apologizing saying, Yo, you were you were amazing in the role, and I'm sorry that I doubted you. Yeah. So the fact that Tom Cruise was able to do the role so well, mm -hmm. you know, be Lestat so well. Yeah, he embodied Lestat in uh, with the with the nature mostly because it's okay. Well, the looks are the looks. It's about the nature of the character, about building the character, mm -hmm. uh, about the transformation of character during the book, and and then bringing it over. And also, entire chronics of the vampires are built. Uh, around specific eras. Mm -hmm. So every character is representing different era. That's why there are so many differences character-wise between different um, different characters of the movie. Yeah. And and you have to keep it this way. Otherwise, you, you're missing the point. Yeah. Like, you can't change them and uh, it, or, like, take away, for example, certain things of their characteristic because it will completely miss the point. Yeah. You can't build the character if you take like if you take Louis out of who he was, yeah. as a, how he grew up, what sort of era he grew up, and as who he grew up to, to begin with. Yeah. You will technically lose the concept why he was suffering that much, mm -hmm. why he felt like he seduced the slave girl on his on his uh, you know ha yeah. in his house and whatever, and it was killing him through entire eternity. Yeah. That's why it was such a beautiful character to see. And that's why he was like interacting with Lester this way because Lester didn't have remorse. No. But he grew up in the times when remorse didn't exist. Yeah. He's, he came, his story is a very different story from Louis, which is why it's, I think Lestat was able to embrace his vampirism so yeah, because they're different Louis eras. Did. Yeah, L Louis is simply romantic. It's yeah. a romantic era in one person. Yeah, and and how the romantic era translate into current times? How how, how romantics just can't stand it? Can't can't exist in that because yeah. nothing about current times is. Uh, Romantic, really. <laughs> well, and it's interesting because I think Lestat is one of them. I think he, I mean, I feel like he's one of them. He's he's in, in the most books, I think, mm -hmm. or he's usually kind of yes, the main character. Yes, like he's like, like the leading character. Usually, yeah, yes. yeah. So, but like how he able, when like uh, when he turns into a rock star mm -hmm. after the fact, which is interesting how he yeah. uses that and, and his whole As persona. As a medium yeah. to, to connect again. Yeah, but his whole, that whole persona just, because you know it, it meshes so well with with the with the music he's making, so everybody loves him for for that, and he just you know he relishes that attention and mm -hmm. that adoration that he gets to to be a performer. So it's so whereas Louis just wants to live a quiet, secluded life because he basically hates he's constantly what suffering. He is. Yeah, because he hates what he is. I mean, they, and, they technically. Technically, each one of them hates what they are. Yeah, they simply just cope with the trauma differently. In, in different, yeah, true, true. <laughs> they they take it differently. They process it through themselves as a character from different eras, built in different, uh, you know, in different way. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you will de deal with it different if you've been, you know, putting pe people on on pails and yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and behaving them and and being just raised as a child of you know medieval time when mm -hmm. everybody been dying so who cares like you can die from being bit by a rat and you can die by you know being by by by, by the vampire so yeah. who cares like life was meaningless 
in mid medievals, right? Yeah. Where, for example, in romantic times, you we they've been crying over every single person that was dying, right? Mm -hmm. So it's different concept of upbringings, and that's why this entire chronicles are so interesting because aside of vampirism that is hot <laughs> and and then it's you know drawing it, it as itself it's entire depth of the character that is behind it and it is very important to to like enhance it and i think like tom cruise and yeah uh, did such a great job enhancing it oh my god <laughs> well and Anne rice created a, a large mythology like in a mm -hmm. history yeah. like the fact that it's the, entire universal yeah the, the the queen of the damned i forgot what her name was but you know she Akasha? Did, yeah Aka yeah <laughs> goes back to egypt yes. like that her the, and her, uh, the beginning. her, and her yeah that and that's where they started so thousands and thousands of years ago whereas say a novel like Dracula, which is a great novel. I, I actually just read it for the first time last year, Bram Stoker's novel that, you know, you don't know why Dracula is why, what he is. He just no, is. No, you do. You well, do. But, well, I mean, it's, it's him trying to fight over death because he had to want to find his love. Yeah. That's basically it. But a part of the, that fact, there is not much depth other than, oh yeah, he, he was he was just a king who basically lost his wife and he won it back. Yeah. So technically, aside of the fact that uh, Gary Oldman man did such a great job yeah yeah <laughs> uh i think like uh, in general that but it's novel it's a, it's a simple short well, it's just peak. about him though there's no universe that yes. you find, like you don't know other vampires that are not connected to him no no it's just one story very yeah. simple very beautiful very sad story but it's one story right yeah. where, where annie rice when not only built one universe and she have multiple universes she have a universum of witches the witches well. yeah she has the witch so yeah. so she is like a tolkien of vampires literally. exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and the, that's what I was gonna say because she because it's like all these other vampires. There's different strands. It's like uh, all these different stories. Um, that again, it, it's amazing how Hollywood just has ignored so much good stuff out there to adapt. Yeah, and it's like Interview with a Vampire. You know, it's a great film. Neil Jordan. Was, who directed it? And it's like so they're just redoing that as opposed to you have all this you have all so much stuff. story there yes. that you can do. You can do mm -hmm. like Tale of the Body Thief. You can you Memnock the Devil. You can do you can do the Vampire Armand. You yeah, know, and, and Armand was such a great concept to begin with. Like for and it would be such a good concept for them to make money since uh, um, Game of Thrones is so popular, right? Yeah, and and that would be like building the entire universe. Because let's be honest, the new interview with the vampires is just simply just cash grab and it is. Uh, and well, lack of in imagination uh, from from the people who are doing it. It's just oh, it's sold good in two thousand. Mm -hmm. well, let's do Y K K Y two K right and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. give them some sort of momentum going. And they just redoing everything what was already perfect uh, instead of actually grabbing the book, reading the book and be like, oh my god, we can do entire universe and we can build entire fucking world around it. Like, yeah. To be honest, it's kind of stupid considering how big sailing success for them was, for example, Vampire Diaries. Yeah. And the universe is nowhere near. Or, no twi or Twilight. That was, even, that was even another Twilight, one. yes. Yeah. But Twilight is not really a universe. Again, this is one story of one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one, yeah. one awkward, uh, possibly pretty autistic girl who <laughs> so happened to find a guy who is way too old for her. Yeah. Uh, but he knows how to operate autistic girls. Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> he has fangs and he shines. Uh, <laughs> but um, I mean, I'm not a big fan, I will be honest. Yeah, no, no, uh, it's a very different kind of thing. <laughs> I, I'm not shaming, I'm just not into it. Not yeah. that. Uh, but I have to admit, my dirty pleasure was watching Vampire Diaries. So I'm not like, mm -hmm. I'm not away from the cheesy yeah. vampire concept of the drama and threesomes. <laughs> I like three sons, I like DP, and I feel like uh, growing up on Vampire Diaries kind of lead me to that moment. <laughs> I could, I never could understand why you need to choose if you can have two. Yeah, yeah. And then there was a True Blood as well, right? Yeah. So technically, why not making it big? Mm -hmm. Like they they drag a Hobbit, one tiny little book, into three different huge movies. You can do it. There is so much material to work with. Why yeah. you are so lazy, guys? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Why don't we Why don't we go into a little bit of the of the music then? So, so sure. metal's your 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 main genre that you like the most. Yes, that's my that's the that's the distraction music of choice. Okay. <laughs> so, who are some like who are some of your favorite bands then? Uh, of all time, I'm a huge fan of Behemoth. Again, okay. Polish. <laughs> okay. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big fan of Satyricon. I li I've been listening to true Norwegian black metal oh, wow. when I was okay. a teenager. 
Yeah, I told you I was one old, uh, odd one out. I wasn't like golf girl on the beginning. I actually ease out myself to be more into golf. Okay. Originally, I was in like really heavy stuff. Okay, like like the undergrad, like Gorgorov and stuff like okay. that. I'm a huge fan of Carpathian Forest, for example. Mm. Marduk, fuck me Jesus, one of my favorite. Mm. So I was like really into that. I was like you know wearing corpse paint and stuff. I still do mm -hmm. sometimes. Uh, and um, nowadays I kind of like ease out into more concepts like you know I'm, I like to have a variety of choices simply so mm -hmm. they reflect my mood yeah. So now I'm listening to cam metal. At least that's how they call it. Calm metal. C cam, like cam, cam, like jizz metal. Oh wow! I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> well, it was created a long time ago because uh, bands like uh, Bad Omens and Sleep Tokens start mm -hmm. to be popular, and they're very basically known for being um, on the edge of very sexy, sexy music for most of the metalheads. So okay, I I watch other podcasts and they be like. How we can call it? There is, it, there are like different genre. We can't put it in deaf. They are not really deaf. They're definitely not black. They are not new. What can we do? Well, everybody having a, some sort of semi boner when they listen to it, it <laughs> makes them a little moist. How about cam metal? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'm like, that makes so much sense. So I listen to that, and I also start to listen to that, uh, like a lot of core, uh, the dead core stuff. Okay. Uh, I like so you're like deep in like not like so or is like more mainstream metal not really your thing or like some okay not necessarily okay. I mean the most mainstream I can get is Machine Head okay that's mainstream I can I can accept listening to Slipknot that's mainstream for me okay okay, okay. like like the, the I, I will still listen to it it's just not my choice okay. I would say uh, I would if I would be able to choose any music to listen it will be Lord Nashor mm -hmm. and and most of the people are like. What's that inhuman sounds? <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, isn't that beautiful? This is so romantic. And <laughs> me listening to, you know, the pain remains. Yeah. Being like, oh my God, like with the tear in my eye, eye when it's like, you know, all the devil songs, songs going on in the background and everybody's like, oh my God, she's crazy, huh? <laughs> she's not normal. She needs help. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. So I like uh, also Slaughter to Prevail. It's Russian okay. deathcore. I, oh, Alex the Terrible, it's absolutely the man. <laughs> oh, this man is everything. I, I look into men. Yeah. I, I know he's married now, unfortunately. But uh. if there is any other highly tattooed, uh, muscly, <laughs> uh, fighting with bears, uh, men out there, especially with a Russian accent, please, please DM me <laughs> right now. F fighting with bears. That's... He literally have a pet bear. Yeah, that's yeah, not... Yeah, it's I, I so see those hot. videos. Yeah, it's I see so those... hot. I'm like, oh my God, that's the man I need. That's <laughs> the man I crave. That's it. And obviously this is... He could growl in my head, like into my ear mm -hmm. in the night and I will be absolutely moist for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that that's the that's the type of romantic I like, you know, fight with the grizzly for me, bitch. Wow. <laughs> I like to heavy lift in the gym. Mm -hmm. My man have to be strong, okay? Yeah, yeah with yeah. my accent, with my approach, with my character, you have to be able to you know, put me in the place, I would yeah. say. And yeah, yeah. it takes um, Takes a month and a half for it. I will be honest. <laughs> yeah, you need to be like a Dolph Lundgren, you know, like an Ivan Drago mm -hmm, to, to that. get. Oh, to get I it. love blonde blonde guys with blue eyes too. So, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but not necessary. That's not a. But but I like that Viking concept. Like yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah, Viking concept is my 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 vibe. Yes, I like so. to be put in the place. I like to be like. You know, I, I do like to dominate people mm -hmm. in general, like especially women. I love to dominate women, mm -hmm. but when it comes to man of my choice, yeah. That will be a guy who know how to deal with my bratty self to the extent I'm like, oh, yes. Yeah, that's what you, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't <laughs> say sorry much. Just, just just to establish that I'm very rarely sorry. So to make me feel like I'm smiling and saying sorry, oh, it takes a, yeah. it takes a work. It takes that would be a special man to yes, be there. Yes, and he need to like anal. That might not be as hard to find. I know. <laughs> that, that might be the easiest thing to find in somebody. I know, I know, I know. So. That, that's possibly the, the way I'm trying to ease out the entire rest of the expectations because they're yeah. all of them pretty high. But hey, I like anal. Be like, okay, <laughs> so we're going to see what you, how you stack up. We're going to put you next to a bear. We're going to see how you do. You come out on top. <laughs> but you can you, fuck my ass. Yeah, right. you, you can make it to the next round. And my tits are great. Yes, yes. And well, I do know how to cook. 
Yes, which un- <laughs> you know, unfortunately, because we're we're getting a little low on time, I'd love to get into the cooking, but I, but I would like uh, to finish up with the boobs if we yeah, could. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's finish up. <laughs> yeah, with finish the up. Boobs. Finish up with the boobs. I, I, I never cook on the first date, so maybe on the first. First, you have to feed me, then I feed you. Concept. Yeah. yeah. You know, you give me your meat, and then I will make you mine. <laughs> that well, is gotta, the tits. Yeah. So I'm curious. What? So I usually this is the one question that I typically ask everybody size. is no 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 not size oh, thanks actually. <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite thing about having huge boobs? My favorite thing about having huge boobs. Hmm. They're very good pillows to cuddle. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like I'm very tough with my character. Mm-hmm. They are the softest part of me. Yeah. Yeah. They, so. they, they, they're giving like the uh, vibe of the fact that there is some comfort. The, yeah, in, in facing there's all that, there there's is There's something some soft and nurturing there. Yes. And I also like the jobs. So that, that's, yeah, that's good too. <laughs> I do really have my pride in go doing really good tit jobs. So. Yeah. I mean, are they were they something that you always, you know, enjoyed, you know, kind of accentuating and, and showing off? I mean, and... they're a part of me, right? But mm-hmm. um, I like to make it the way people see rest. Mm-hmm. Usually my tits take 80% of the... Yeah, usually, yeah, usually. Like 80%. So I don't really... If anything, they live their own life and mm-hmm. I completely don't take responsibility for the twins if they, they try to like make a peek or just appearance out of nowhere. It's like they live their own life. I'm here just to carry them, <laughs> honest to God. I'm simply <laughs> just trying to keep them safe and myself with them. Uh, and and there are just a lot of fun for most of the people and I do like to bring fun to the table. I am fun. <laughs> yes, I, I would. Yeah, you definitely look like you're a, a lot of fun. Yes, so I so, like to be a lot but, of fun. But bo- obviously huge, huge boobs are even more fun. I'm I'm sure even if you didn't have huge boobs, you'd still be really fun. But, it's but more is more. But it helps. More is more. Yes. And I strongly believe more is more. So why why choose one if you can have them all? Like, that's the concept. Like, you know, I also yeah. like two things in one time. So <laughs> <laughs> so are, are they usually the uh, one of your body parts that people like the most in terms of when they're, when they're with you and... Like they get more focus. I mean, I would say like that when it comes to my job, obviously there are possibly yeah, yeah, yeah. like the biggest point of you know sales. I would say, yeah. um, but funny enough, actually my most popular is my ass. Okay, at least with the people who take me seriously, <laughs> <laughs> it's the ass and the anal part. <laughs> yeah, and then I heard from people who try to be all like you know flirty and stuff that my eyes are nice. Yeah, so if nice. someone is capable of looking in my actual eyes, mm-hmm. I, I, I already turn extra points. Nice. You, you make it difficult, I, I, though. I know I make it difficult. You make it and difficult. And it's kind of, you know, it's a very good way of, um, like, uh, selection. Because mm-hmm. if you can't go past that, you will not be able to handle of that, all of this. And technically, you will not be capable of even understanding how much fun is the rest, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, if you're just focused on that, f- feel free, but... Mm-hmm. I look for people who can go past that while yeah. still exploring it. Yeah, no, it's it's great, but obviously the the person they're attached to, there's there's a lot more. Yes, there is still asshole. Yeah. <laughs> there, I have a nice tits and nice ass to match the yes. energy on front All of and the back. Yes, and then I still, you know, can look at you and be like, "There's this pair," you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> all, yeah, all of it. Yeah, and then there I have nice pairs of lips on the top and the bottom. You know, like I like to bring all sorts of stuff. And like I said, visuals are good when they are matching. So I'm trying to match the energy everywhere. So mm-hmm. you don't have to choose. You can have them all. Yeah. How fun is that? Yeah. So, don't I mean, do you, do you like huge boobs on other women? Yes. I love big tits. Okay. Oh, I'm a big fan of big tits. Yeah. Yes. I absolutely love big tits. I like fake tits. I like the pierced nipples. Yes, mm-hmm. I'm a bisexual woman through and through, and tits are whew, my fa- one of my favorite things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, like, do you? I mean, do you have a size that you like? Do you like them super, super huge? You no, like them no, I more? like it. I like it all nicely, visually like balanced, right? Mm-hmm. So, for example, if I have big my my. My ass and my tits are exactly the same measurements. Really? By centimeter, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't planned. It's simply just, it just, is how just it happened. is. Yes. I was actually shocked to find out myself. <laughs> 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 when I find out for, for like measuring purposes for like latex and stuff, they'd be like, oh my God, your ass is exactly by the fucking inch identical like my tits. Wow. And then I have small waist. So I'm like, I like anime and manga too. So yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, 
yeah, yeah, that's that's my type of woman. I mm-hmm. love it. I, I'm a huge fan of hentai. Mm-hmm. My favorite thing to wank to, hentai. I okay. love hentai. Oh my god. All those tentacles, feeling <laughs> all those holes with those big tits, like just bouncing. Yes. Yeah. Yes, from me. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. And then cream pies. Mm. Uh, like that's I'm getting now all excited <laughs> for my scene. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, you got you got another one coming up, so yes, it's nice that I you're you're getting um, yourself kinda warmed up. Yeah, I will be definitely warm up. <laughs> my ass is already warm up from the morning, so <laughs> Nice. So now nice. now it's the rest that will get used and you know mm. um I will bring rest of the fun I get. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I technically love hentai women with big hips, mm-hmm. small waists, big tits, mm-hmm. with Ahigawa face, you know. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, and it's interesting because, you know, when you go to Japan, obviously a lot of their women are very petite, so they don't have, you know, yeah. they're not very curvy. They don't, they're not very busty, but. Uh, but I'm not into, uh, I mean, you heard my type of a man. I'm not into yeah. realistic concept of existing people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, Alex the Terrible exists, but he's already married. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I still hope there is a Viking for me too. Hopefully. Or at least like a nerd that can enhance the Viking soul. Yeah. I will live with that. As long as he's a little bit buffed. Like not mm. not just games, not just reading to- Tolkien, but also a bit of gymming here and there. Because okay. I have a thing for um, very uh, veiny hands. Oh, okay. oh, I love veins on men's hands. Oh, my God. I I have, I have look on the, sm- you know, things that usually people don't look, okay? Mm-hmm. So my thing is, like, I'm not into big dicks, right? Like, I, oh, mm-hmm. do you like... No, the size is not that important. What is important for me is, like, if you have nice hands that look very, like, the, that, you know, fingers need to look very nicely and groomed and whatever, and I, okay. and I like the veins on it, and I really like muscular bag. Mm-hmm. I la- love men with mu- muscles visible on the back. Oh my God, it's the oh, hottest thing. That's why I want to have a mirror on top of my bed. So, so you simply can see the so back I can muscles. see the back muscles. Oh my God. Nice. There is nothing hotter. And there is nothing less hot than a guy with small calf. With a small what? Calf. I hate small calves when the guys are like oh, all, a mus- calf, calf, sorry. Yeah, all muscly and build, build and whatever. And then the leg is like pff, chicken leg. Oh my God, no. Please don't. Yeah. Please don't. I have big. M- Calves myself, yeah. so I can't have a man with skinnier legs than mine. Oh yeah, that's yeah. like not hot. Yeah, and I've seen yeah there there are, are guys that they yeah like their upper bodies are yes, really really all muscular. That is all big and whatever, and then you look at his legs and you're like, oh my god, they're this like, is they're so like sad. Yeah, they're, they're, like th- how many leg days did you skip? All of them? <laughs> <laughs> like if you can't build your calf big that means that you have not enough stamina to even carry your own body frame yeah. forget about mine and i'm a big girl and i'm like you know i like to be thrown in the air like i you need someone with strength yeah i i do love to be thrown in the air like i feel like i don't have that much weight on me that's the, my yeah. favorite thing that's i uh, for example like to be in like restraints and whatever in like mm, shibari because mm-hmm. it makes me float and then you can access all the holes without me feeling like i have to like you know make a space yeah you know whatever everything is accessible and it's easy to get and i can have it both deep Another, nice. another good stuff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to feel like man who is fucking me know how to fuck me and can handle me, and I don't have to be afraid I will break his leg. Yeah, yeah. Right. That'd, that'd be important. Yeah, I would rather not have that type of experiences. Honestly, I can break your bed, but I don't want to break your leg. Yes. Okay? Yes. I know that medical bills, especially in US, are very expensive. So. <laughs> well, and imagine trying to describe that. It's like, how'd you hurt yourself? Uh, yeah, I was trying to do something, and yeah, she had so much love to give. My yeah. legs didn't make it. Yep. <laughs> so um, <laughs> she didn't take my breath away. She just <laughs> yeah, she just <laughs> swooped me from my legs. <laughs> yep. Imagine! Oh my God, that would be so awkward. Oh man, yeah. It, 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 so, um, all right. Well, so I mean, I, I, uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. Don't worry. I'm sure that, we, that you will summon me back. Oh, like well, a good I'd, love to, I'd love to have you back if you want. If you want to come back, absolutely. We have possibly so much more to talk about. And I, I told you, one hour is nothing. For no, me. It, it isn't. It isn't. So you, you were, you flew by. <laughs> So anyway, but again, you like were, a good demon. Yes, <laughs> you're a wonderful guest, and to all of you out there in huge boob land, we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>